हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस एन इम्पॉर्टेंट जजमेंट रिगार्डिंग द प्रिवेंशन ऑफ करप्शन एक्ट फ्रेंड्स एज वी नो दैट फॉर प्रोसिक्यूशन ऑफ द अक्यूज अंडर द प्रिवेंशन ऑफ करप्शन एक्ट द डिमांड इज सैंक वन ऑन इफ डिमांड इज नॉट प्रूव द अक्यूज कुड नॉट बी कन्विक्टेड बट ही आर वी आर हैविंग अ वेरी डिफरेंट केस वेयर द कोर्ट हैज डिटर्मिन द फॉलोइंग थ्री इशूज नंबर वन If the accused is charged under Section Seven and Thirteen One D of the Prevention of Corruption Act, and ultimately he got acquitted from Section Thirteen Subclause One Subclause D of the PC Act, the prime key is that whether he could be convicted under Section Seven of the PC Act by the virtue of Section Twenty of the PC Act if there is mere recovery of money. Number two, what are the basic protocols to prove the demand? Because there is a lot of confusion in our mind. that what are the basic protocols to be kept in the mind while determining the real case under the prevention of corruption act and number 3 what is the basic rule of the accompanying witness whether they are the sustaining or the corroborative evidence in consequence of which we could draw an appropriate conclusion so these are the point to be considered by the honorable court and apart from that these all points had been decided in favor of the accused so first we have to know the basic facts then we have to know why the legal principles has been applied in favor of the accused and in the last we will discuss the conclusion so that if we are having the same issue how the judgment could help us to win our case friends judgment has been passed by honorable odisha high court The citation is Rebati versus State of Odisha. Judgment has been pronounced on fifth of February two thousand twenty-four. In this case, the accused has preferred the appeal under Section three seventy-four sub clause two of CRPC. He was convicted by the Consent Trial Court under Section seven of the Prevention of Corruption Act, and he was acquitted under Section thirteen one D and thirteen two of the Prevention of Corruption Act. The basic facts are that the accused was working as some inspector in the excise department. He conducted a raid in the house of the concerned complainant on seventeenth of September nineteen ninety seven. It is a case of complainant that he was constantly called by that official and ultimately he had demanded rupees five hundred to close the case. However, there was some scaling and ultimately the final figure to be given was rupees two hundred. Finding no way, as per his submission, he went to concern vigilance office, and finally they verified the demand, and ultimately the affair has been lost. During the course of trap proceedings, the accused was caught red-handed, and ultimately he was prosecuted and charged, and due sanction has been opted. The court has framed the charges after examination of the witnesses and recording of the statement of the accused. The court heard the argument. and finally the accused has been convicted under section 7 and acquitted for the charge under section 31d and 32 of the prevention of corruption act the basic attack of the defense is that there is no evidence of demand merely on the ground of recovery of money and by the virtue of section 20 of the pc act he was convicted and the said approach of the concerned trial court is wrong because it is basic settled guidelines of the honorable supreme court that the demand is sine qua non the prosecution should try the best to prove both the limbs demand and acceptance but if acceptance is proved but demand is not proved in that scenario the accused could not be convicted the concerned accused has relied on judgment of case anathanama versus state of telangana neeraj datta versus state v venkata subarao versus state on the other hand the concerned state has opposed the petition and prayed to reject the case the court has perused the circumstances the court in this case found that The concerned trial court has not found any demand, whether direct or indirect. But the court convicted the accused only on the ground that there is a recovery of the illegal gratification, and apart from that, there is a presumption of Section Twenty of the PC Act, and the accused has totally failed to rebut the presumption. The court further observed that the continuous reading of evidence on the record, it would be clear that there are two evidences to corroborate the demand: number one, the complainant, and number two, the accompanying witness. the complaining witness means a witness who is supposed to overhear the conversation between the appellant and the consent complainant but the key point is that in the present case before the recording of evidence the complainant had been died 
and as far as the accompanying witness is concerned he has not deposed anything regarding the alleged conversation so there is no sufficient evidence to constitute the real demand which is signed qua non to establish section 7 of the pcr the court observed that in the judgment of case sanathanama versus state of telangana the court has dealt with the similar conditions the court means the supreme court and the court has allowed the appeal by setting aside the judgment of conviction and observed that the demand and acceptance are signed qua non in absence of demand the accused could not be convicted even though there is recovery of money so to bring the accused within the preview of section 7 of the pca the demand is required to be proved the similar view has been retreated by honorable supreme court in case of neeraj datta versus state of nct wherein the court has laid down certain guidelines and also specified that at the inception no presumption could be drawn to draw the presumption it is sine qua non that the demand and acceptance is proved beyond the reasonable doubt if demand and acceptance is not proved beyond the reasonable doubt the accused could not be convicted and the same can be proved either by direct evidence or by indirect evidence and apart from that the presumption is not absolute it could be rebutted for this the accused is not required to come in the witness box he may do so by doing the efficient cross examination and to bring the contradiction on the record but the key point is that the contradiction should be material and they should be major and apart from that it has been specified that section 20 of the pc act comes into motion when the offense is proved if the offense is not proved in that scenario section 20 could not be applied and the accused could not be convicted the court specified that in the case at hand there is a trap the amount has been recovered but the key point is that mere recovery could not be a basis until and unless it is supported by the demand in the present case at hand the demand is not proved because the complainant has died and apart from that the company witness has not deposed anything and there is no version regarding the actual conversation between the concerned complainant and the accused regarding the alleged bribe if the alleged scenarios are not duly corroborated in that scenario it is totally unsafe to convict the accused so the court specified that looking into the fact and circumstances it is a fit case where accused deserves the benefit so friends this judgment entirely clarifies the following five points number 1 if the accused is acquitted under section 13d of the pc act he could not be convicted under section 7 of the pc act got the point number 2 the mere recovery of money is not sufficient the third point is that the prosecution is bound to prove the demand and acceptance beyond the reasonable doubt number 4 by recovery of money section 20 could not be invoked number 5 if the demand is not proved beyond reasonable doubt section 20 of the pc act cannot be invoked to convict the accused okay so in our case first we have to examine the entire fact number 2 what the complainant exactly deposed before the concerned court because the testimony of complainant entirely depend upon number of factors factors are number 1 the statement under section 161 of crpc number 2 the statement under section 164 of crpc number 3 the electronic evidences number 4 the actual conversations if there is a contradiction we have to point out the same because if the prosecution is itself inconsistent and it is not going to corroborate the evidence in the efficient manner in that scenario you will definitely get the benefit because i am remembering one of the case of mahesh ps versus state of karnataka wherein the complainant story the prosecution story was quite differ as set up in the transcription the court observed that it is a fit case to draw the adverse presumption against the complainant so whenever the case is going to be put up before the concerned court it is a duty of the prosecution to be genuine and to prove the case beyond reasonable doubt if the prosecution is not able to discharge a duty you are not bound to explain anything you have a right to keep silence so in that scenario this judgment could help us in the following two perspective first examine the entire facts which i narrated to you and then you have to find out the real case set up by the concerned prosecution so that you could easily throw your defense if the prosecution case is not stable at the inception means by the bare perusal of their own case if there is inconsistency then it would be very easier for us to throw our defense at the inception so do not worry you have to chalk out your case if you are not able to chalk out your case in that scenario you would not be able to win the case because number of advocates suggest that it is not safe to open the defense at the inception but i say if you are not going to open your case at the inception you would not be able to chalk out your further case because to rebut the presumption your first statement is quite important that's why it is usually said the well begun is the half done so well begun is you should do the proper briefing you should do the proper preparation of the memorandum or the representation so that 
if your point is not going to be considered then it could be a case of unfair investigation so remember or keep this point in your mind while contesting the cases under the prevention of corruption act apart from that there is no need to worry so be prepared and be ready for the legal fight and definitely you will win so friends see you in the next video till then jai hind jai bharat jai shri ram jai balaji ki